the higher graphics and but the base lines and to put information on the top end um, I really need a you know I need something to go along with this so go on number two a uh, bit more complex got a couple more elements into it the big thing is it's got a curve so um, again with the question it says it's a um, two wheels at a lamp house and blah uh, armored cars one below to the other with a section of the armor plated okay but draw in the position indicated the plan of the lamp so same as usual, uh, which I've done quite quickly in my last video. Uh, what we're looking for here is you can project up the points that are relevant. The challenge now is obviously we've got a curve. Now some people are never sure where to put bounce lines. If you've got centre lines, all you need to do is join the centre lines together once the center lines are joined together and then that's the point that's where you draw the bounce line um, so I've done it a lot of times especially on um, national five joints you, you draw the bounce line from the corner of the end elevation or elevation depending on what it's called um, but that doesn't always work and obviously on this it's four plus six wheel shape so um, I would always suggest the line up the two centers and if I need to but has always worked for me um, so manage from so you're projecting up the sides of this uh, light item uh, and the next part we've got is if you're if you're looking down on a curved shape so looking down this way the, the, you're going to see a sort of curved shape so much like I did last time we come and sketch bottom line goes back a wee bit and the top it goes quite but far back and then it's maybe like a mirror image of the shape of the curve pear shape rather um, so it's maybe something like that um, so again what do you need to do if it's a circle what do you do 36 here to get the actual pin points um, so uh, in the marking scheme for these drawings um, in an exam if you get a shape that's got a curve like the specimen paper if, it, if it's got a curve and yet the start and finish point or in this case if you start over here midpoint end point bollocks in between those you need to find at least two intermediate points um, to get the pain points um, so make sure there's lots of different techniques um, some people do sectional method for asymmetric drawings where you split up every five millimeters along um, the the argument against that before used to be that it takes too long however now it's not as much of an issue but the specimen paper is quite large so I would have just put ages on this question it doesn't require it so all I'm doing is projecting the numbers from the clock face uh, around our drawing so from here on here and up and around and I'll match the numbers together That's what I'm going for first. And now I'll start darkening it out. So the end of the curve bit where it changes to a straight at this point here, uh, which is the middle. So we can start to darken that bit in. we've got that we can see okay that the end of the shape is nearly dark now it's just a case of finding the intermediate points so we've got 12 o'clock here which is just on the center line um, and we've got one o'clock and eleven o'clock which is the first one out we can if it helps follow the lines down and follow it up whichever method you like best um, I'm more than happy for you to do some people you know like a pattern of out as I say whatever is easiest for you so that's the curve shape again uh, it doesn't ask for hidden detail interestingly on this unlike the last question um, however I would just put in if you ask for it the last time you get this point <sighs> that's that you could put in the top and the bottom of the wall again it's completely your choice so um, if you're 
Josh is it? He definitely did. <sighs> Him and Ram look look question, at least based on the specimen paper. There's more to do with the surface than that, in all fairness. So, um, next question, surface development. What do we do? Um, now, normally you'd number a hot faced fill start in here, one, two, and so on and so forth. Um, it, but it doesn't go all the way around. So I mean you could number it like a hot face, but remember all the numbers are points of reference. So it's in this line, you know, here, number twelve. You can call it whatever you want. So I'm gonna call it number one, number two, number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, no point in no point in putting a number in between these points because there's nothing there but like a curve. It just goes like a normal curve. Um so as you would if it was just a cylinder, surface development, uh, take the measurement from 1 to 2, 1 to R, 2 to D, 1 to R, 3 to 4, then we've got a larger size, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, these lines along, so we need to do the heights of each line. Heights of each line again from here. You could take them from there, either or. It's whatever one your preference is. So it uh, doesn't necessarily make a difference because in this shape it truly is nothing away from you. Towards you, you're staying the same. Obviously, um, people are, are being nitpicky with it today. You could be doing this faster, but obviously, it doesn't matter. Top half are the same as the bottom half. Yes, absolutely agree with you. Um, however, um, if you want to work your way around the circle in a logical way, you can do it this way. And again, it's a wee bit slower, um, but I wouldn't mind trying to do it over and over again. If we're marking these on in a question like the specimen paper, you may want to just use a ruler or a traveling method, which I will show in my next video on that. So, once you've got them all done, <laughs> the other thing that this just should go up is on a curve you don't have four faces, whereas on a, on a fold, like 0 0.5 and 0 0.6, you have four points. So, make sure you get it right, so to speak. Um, uh, remember, fold lines, three short lines and one long line. Uh, might as well get three short lines there, unfortunately. Apologies about that. Um, so, do that. The curve. Remember, you can turn the board if you find it easier um, to join together points. Last thing I just want to ask you to do is a true shape. Now, true shapes are projected 
perpendicular to the surface that you're drawing it from. Uh, so that's 60, so the perpendicular would be 30. If you want to check, you can just put one little bag like that, and you can see it's done that in degrees. So we'll project up all the points at the rear of the house and for the, the arm of the light. your width from here, um, well, let's have a look at the middle, two and nine, here, and one up here, give me eight, give me seven more, And the last one, five and six, this is going to be seven and four. And all we need to do, super easy, is draw that all together. Just like that. And you notice it just looks like an elongated end elevation. I would do that. I always think of it as what if you pulled the shape out, what hole would be left? In this case, the arm of the car, um, and that's how I always think of it. It's going to be like an elongated, or in this case, end elevation, depending on where you are. Uh, once you've done that, drawing done. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed that.